All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I uh, haven't uh, haven't really been putting up too many videos lately, um, mostly because well, haven't really been catching a whole lot. Uh, the water's pretty warm around here now. A lot of the streams are getting low, really warm for trout, so I haven't really been fishing for them. Um, I wanted to show you guys what my favorite fly is for fly fishing um, for trout um, in smaller streams and. Uh, it's my go-to lure. I tie these all myself and you can tie them in a variation of colors and sizes um, to basically match uh, the hatch. It's called the uh, Parachute Atoms. This is the fly. And this I just tied this a couple of seconds ago before I turned the camera on. But uh, this is what the fly looks like. And I'll tell you why it's my favorite. This part right here, this little white puff on the top. Um, I call that the post. Um, that right there makes it so this little fly, you can see it from a long distance away. It's, it's, it's sort of like a little indicator for you. And the fish can't really see that very well because they're underneath the fly. So you can cast this thing out, you know, 30, 40 feet with a, on a little stream, upstream or so. And you can watch it kind of go down through the rapids. And, and that way you don't lose sight of your fly. I've caught... A lot of different species on this type of fly right here. It's super easy to fish. It floats really well. Um, you can skirt it really well across the water um, and it looks good and if you tie it in a bunch of different sizes and colors you can pretty much match this fly with any type of bug out there on the stream. So that is why this is my favorite fly. It's easy. I have a bunch of them in my fly box and 90% of the time when you see me dry fly fishing this is what I'm going to be using, this type of fly. So I'll give you a little bit better look at it real quick. It's a size 14. This is sort of the standard type color of the parachute atoms. It's got like a gray body to it. Um, but I like to tie it with an olive body and uh, that works really well for me sometimes in a black body. But uh, this this body actually won't look that light in the water. Once it gets wet, it turns a little bit darker. Uh, I got a few tips and tricks because there's there's a few things you can do to make it a little bit easier and faster for you. And probably you know some of these master fly tires will probably laugh at me the way I do this, but I catch fish on these things all day long. And it takes me just a couple of minutes to crank this fly out. So I'm gonna get out the hooks. I use Mustad and size 14 dry fly super small hook see that pretty small I think I'm gonna have to zoom in with the camera here in a second um, I'm gonna use the olive thread again this is uh, ultra 140 brown olive it's called so basically we just tie in here with the thread and get started clip that off and you can work your way back to the tail here all right you're gonna need some hackle this is like a lower grade type of feather here. All of these strands of feathers are not the same size. Uh, you can buy some of these where everything is all the same size, but if you're just starting out, get the lower grade stuff because you can tie a whole bunch of different sizes with just one of these. I'll show you what the higher quality stuff looks like right here. It basically looks like this and they all come like this. See it's all uniform. You can see how this nice piece that's all the same size is different from let's say this piece right here it's a whole bunch of different sizes it goes really wide gets skinny but we can use this and uh, you want to just take it hold it and then uh, run your fingers up so it spreads the, the feathers out and then you want to just grab you want to pinch once take another bunch pinch those off just kind of pinch it and pull it up and they come right off the off the feather there now we're left with a nice little bundle of uh, feathers. Alright, so what I do is I lay my tail on there like so. Get it to where I want it. I like it a little bit longer. And then we just tie that right in. Alright. Just kind of work your way back. I'm going to cut off this extra up here. Because I had it a little bit long. And then go over that. Kind of let it lay down a little bit and I like to go 
just about where the barb is on the hook when that hangs down. That's about as far as I go with the thread on the tail part. So then we work our way, whoops. So then we work our way up to about just in front of the midpoint on this fly, which is about right here. And then we're going to tie in our post. And for the post material, I use a, um, it's called a McFly Lawn is what it's called. And it's just a um, poly yarn is another name for it. It's uh, basically, this is the pack it comes in right here. And you can get white, you can get, I don't know if you can see me through this hook, I hope so. You can get white, yellow, orange, whatever color you want, really. Uh, I like to use white, yellow, and gray. Um, orange, not so much, but the orange does stand out pretty well on the water. But I like to use more natural uh, tones. Pull out one of these whites. So you don't need the whole thing. You just cut off a piece, just to make sure you have enough. Alright, so this is what we're left with. And basically what you want to do is take it, wrap it around your thread, bring your thread up, just like that. It locks it right to the hook. Go through the middle again just to lock it down, maybe one more time, just to lock it down. And then you want to go on either side, back and forth like this, on either side of this post material that we're using and basically what that's going to do is it's going to build up a ramp on each side of that poly yarn and then we're going to use that ramp to continue tying this post I'll show you kind of build it up here a little bit all right now that's probably good I built up a little bit of ramp now you want to wrap your thread around just like this and just kind of work your way up work your way right up the post and I should have said at the beginning of this video but I assume that you all probably realize that I'm not a master fly tire and that's probably good probably maybe a little too much but that's alright let me work our way down lock it again on each side a couple times and then I work my thread to the back, right to where the tail starts, and then leave my thread hanging there. And what I like to do right here, just as added security, is I like to take my uh, either head cement or some type of uh, glue, fly tying glue. This is uh, Fish Pimp uh, Hard Head. This is actually a water base, I believe. Yeah, it's a water base, so it doesn't have that really strong smell. And now what does it, I do is I just take a needle, I get a little bit of glue on that, and then I uh, put it right on that post on each side, and basically what that's going to do is lock that post in that position, so when you're fishing at it out in the water, the whole thing doesn't twist on you. If you get a bite, you can try to reuse the fly as many times as you can, it just makes it a little bit stronger and also won't let that unravel. Alright, so I've got my dubbing here. I'm going to use this color brown right here. Uh, and it's actually called Fox Squirrel Thorax. So that's what we're going to use. Take a couple small pinches of that. You want to get it nice and light. And then uh, you want to put it on your thread and twist it all in the same direction. Just twist it. Pinch it in between your fingers and twist it but you want to do it in the same direction you don't want to go back this way and then back this way it won't it won't stick well to your thread all right so I think I've got a I think I've got it pretty well set on my thread there and basically you want to try to taper the body a little bit so start lighter in the back and then work your way up to the front make it a little bit heavier and what I like to do when I get to this post part is I do one wrap in the front and then I go back 
and then you can peel off the rest of that. You're not going to need that there. Yeah, they're not going to be perfect. My, that first one I showed you was actually pretty perfect. I was pretty impressed. I haven't tied one in about, I don't know, six months. So that's all set. Now what we're going to do is tie in this hackle material here. And what you want to do is take the, uh, the end of your hackle, move, up, move it up with your fingers again, and then pinch all that off so you just have the bare... Uh, the spine of the of the feather there and that's what we're going to tie in stick that right out the side here tie that in once and twice and then we're going to tie around the post here with it so it's going to stand straight up like that work our way back down and then let our thread hang and now what you want to do with this is you're going to start at the top of the post and just work your way around it around and down and that's what's going to create the wings and uh, it's going to make it float pretty good I like to use a little bit more than I probably should but uh, I like my fly to float for a long time so I put a bunch on this and that's probably good. And now what I this is what some people probably would go shouldn't do that, Christophe. Shouldn't do that. But guess what I gotta say to you? I'm doing it. And it works. So you can't really see this side of it. But uh I'm holding this right here with this finger. My thread's still on this side. I'm just gonna cross over over this I'm crossed over it and then you want to so that locks it and you're just going to keep wrapping around that post but try not to trap any of those fibers of that feather just keep it low wrap it around again to lock that wrap it around again all right and now you can let go and uh, basically so what you did was wrapped around the very bottom underneath these feathers here you wrapped underneath that to lock this basically straight down you've wrapped that right around it so now we can trim this off and you want to kind of pull this back a little bit so you can get in here and try not to trap any of the fibers I could actually finish that fly just like that, but I'm going to put just a little bit more dubbing on the front. I kind of have my post a little bit far forward. Really small amount. Right, I'm going to pull that back so we don't trap anything in there. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do just to cover up that little bit there. All right, and now we're going to whip finish this, which basically all this tool does is make a whole bunch of half hitches around the hook to lock, to uh, you know, do your finishing knot. So this tool takes a little bit of practice, but it's actually pretty easy once you figure it out. So I'm going to use a whip finisher here. And you want to try not to trap any of the fibers in there, but I usually end up trapping, trapping a few. As you can see, I got a whole bunch in there. And then, but at the end, I pick them out. I don't tighten it down yet. Yeah, I know a lot of you pro fly tires are laughing at me here, but this is what I do. I pick them right out. Use a needle. Alright, so I picked all those guys out. My knots done I'm just gonna cinch it down a little bit tighten it pull it down I can I can trim the knot and then I put a little uh, glue on the knot and I also sometimes put just a little bit of glue I put a little bit on the knot first on the bottom right where the knot got snipped and then sometimes I'll put a little bit where we wrap the thread around the very base of that just to hold that in place, I'll 
pick up the uh, feathers there and just put a little bit right in there just to hold that knot. And then we can trim the very top of our fly here. So it leaves a little bit of a post on top. Just like that. And that's it. Done. Here's the other one I did. It actually came out quite a bit better, but uh, guaranteed that they'll both work. This post a little bit higher, but it doesn't really matter much. You can trim it off some if you want. But there they are. That's what I like to use. So this is what I like to use on a lot of the streams up here in Maine. I mean, you can tie this fly to make it look like basically any type of fly that you want just by doing a, a, a different color body, different colored wings in the tail part the tail section there you can make it look like a caddis fly you know a blue winged olive you make it look like anything you want so I get a lot of fish on the olive body um, parachute Adam style and uh, the wings I don't really think that that ever matters but sometimes you can mix colors too you can put two strands together and wrap those around that's how it's done guys if you have any questions let me know um, I'm gonna try to put some of the supplies that I used in the description um, especially a vise because some pretty good vices that are cheap um, I have another one somewhere that I could show you but I don't know where it is but this is the one I use right here this this anvil um, so I'll put that in I'll try to put in a couple other things that I can think of yeah, fall is my favorite time to fish so hoping to really uh, get some time in this this fall um, the other thing that I've been kind of working on another reason I have been posting a lot is uh, I've been working on making my own lures and um, hoping that I can try to sell some of these at some point um, right now I'm just starting out with spinners inline spinners for trout um, you can also use them for bass and uh, panfish but uh, so I've made some I'm hoping down the line I can make some uh, custom crankbaits for bass. When I get the right equipment, I can do some painting and uh, do some casting spoons and maybe trolling spoons, things like that. Um, but uh, I'm just starting to make a few spinners here. Here's a few that I've made. That one's got a, a nickel body with a brass blade on it. And the rest of these are just nickel bodied um, spinners. I don't have any of the brass ones up here right now, but uh, about you can see, like this one right here is one of my favorites, sort of a smelt imitation. Um, this one's got a stamped blade on it, but but yeah, I mean, there's two different sizes I'm gonna be making, and. Uh, whole bunch of different colors, color options, things like that. Um, this one right here is a smaller blade for a crappy. I like that color black with chartreuse. But anyways, there's a few of them there. So I've been kind of cranking those out and I've uh, started a Facebook page for this lure, these lures that I'm making and an Instagram page. So if you guys wouldn't mind checking that out and just following it, I uh, don't really have much on there right now, but uh, hoping that I will at some point soon. I have a few pictures of some of the ones that I've made up there. I might actually, when I get a few more of these made, get a little bit of an in inventory stocked up here, give a few of these away to some people so they can, uh, you know, just try them out and see uh, how they like them, if they have any advice, um, different color options, things like that that they would recommend. So uh, stay tuned for that. I might be doing a giveaway soon here, give away a handful of these things. Um, if you're a trout fisherman and and they work for bass too. I've caught bass on these uh, on both sizes of these actually Yeah, and if you guys actually are interested in buying one um, right now if you want if you want to just send me a message on that Facebook page um, I could get you hooked up with some of these if you want don't really have a website or anything with these on it yet, but uh, So that's what I got there. So I hope this video is helpful guys. Give it a thumbs up subscribe See you next time if you can check out my Facebook page and Instagram page for my lures and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.